Okay, here we have a situation where we've got this Venn diagram of emotions. So this, there's a link to where I got this diagram from. So you can see the combination of two things. So short-lived happiness and prolonged suffering. That happens when you eat too much Mexican food. Sudden rage and prolonged suffering, suffering happens when you stub your toe twice. Sudden rage and short-lived happiness is caused by scrolling through your Facebook newsfeed. And if you have sudden rage, short-lived happiness, and prolonged suffering, that means you are a sports fan. So we want to create some functions that will diagnose what's happening if somebody reports that any of those things are true. So if someone reports that short-lived happiness is true and sudden rage is true, but prolonged suffering is false, so that means short-lived happiness and sudden rage are true, but prolonged suffering is false, so that means somebody is scrolling through their Facebook newsfeed. We're doing some super advanced artificial intelligence here in Microsoft Excel. So how do we create uh, a single function in column D that will account for this. So um, I'm going to say equals if. OK, so a logical test. What do I have to check for first? Well, I've got lots of different conditions. I've got the combination of all three, and then three separate combination of two of those conditions. <coughs> So I'm going to have to do this in. I'm going to have to do this in a proper order. The hardest part about this is the logical thinking that goes through with it. The Excel part, I would say, is not super hard. The key is I've got to start off with the condition that's going to separate my data the most, and that's going to be the combination of all three things. Um, so I've got to check to see if all three are true first. Because if my first check uh, was for short-lived happiness and prolonged suffering alone, if I just did two of those without the third, Excel would stop when both conditions are met and it would not continue checking well, for all three conditions. So I've got to check for all three conditions first. So if, if A2, B2, and C2 are true, if all of these th three three things are true, that means being a sports fan. Okay, so this is go this function is going to work. Um, I'm just going to put false in quotes here for now, just to show what happens when I run this. The function works for being a sports fan. So if I change, if I change this to true, it's going to say being a sports fan, change it back to false. But it, it, the function is not working for the other cases. So here's where I need to modify this false. And I'm going to nest, meaning put inside this if statement, another if statement. So I'm going to say if, and I'm going to put both parentheses there right now so I don't forget, because that's super easy to screw up. OK, now the order doesn't matter as much, because I'm just looking for pairs. Um, so if short lift. Uh, I'm going to use and. I'll put both those parentheses there. This is going to get messy. Short-lived happiness, comma, sudden rage. So if those two are true, I'm going to be very careful editing this. That's my logical test. I'm going to put a comma. So if short-lived happiness and sudden rage are true, that means in quotes, Scrolling through Facebook. I'm just going to abbreviate it just for now. OK. So now I'm again in the value if false. And I'm going to nest another if statement here. Yeah, it gets messy. I know. And OK. So if sudden range, comma, prolonged suffering. So I've got sudden range, prolonged suffering, uh, stabbing your toe. Stabbing your toe twice. And so that's good. 
stubbing your toe is not good, but the formula is going to work. I gotta put a common value if false. I'm gonna need to do another check, nest another if statement here. And there's a lot going on. So the only one I haven't done is prolonged suffering, comma, short-lived happiness. And I'm gonna, so you'll notice when I use the right arrow key, even though my cursor is blinking right there in the formula bar, it's gonna change my cell reference. So I have to click where I want to put this. If I, if I click inside that formula bar again, it's gonna work for me. So the value of true is eating, uh, wait, where were we? Short-lived happiness and prolonged suffering. Eating too much Mexican food. Okay. Gosh, there's a lot of parentheses there. That's a big function. Let's copy it down. Uh, let, let's see, does it work? Short-lived happiness, sudden rage. Short-lived happiness, sudden rage. Scrolling through Facebook. Yes, it worked. Uh, sudden rage and prolonged suffering. Stabbing your toe twice. Yep, it worked. Short-lived happiness and prolonged suffering. Eating too much Mexican food. So what if just one of these is true? I haven't really accounted for that yet. So it's just going to default to being false. I don't have one last value for false. I could change this, but I'm not going to. This formula is as complex as it needs to be, uh, but the formula does work. So it's a the key idea here is that you've got your if statement, you've got a value for true. Uh, inside that value of true or value of false, you can put other if statements, other Boolean statements, other functions. You can do quite a bit here. And as you can see, the simple Venn diagram gets fairly complex if you're going to program this logic inside an if statement. Really what you're doing here is computer programming. You're just doing it inside an Excel spreadsheet instead of doing it in a programming language like Swift or C Sharp or C++. Lots of different programming languages out there.